this is a video that's long overdue because we started a new business uh, the business name is called Atira and we make some of the world's most badass salt and pepper grinders so if you like cooking your wild game meat then I think we have a product for you you can go and visit their website at atirasc.com but then anyway back to the top hat video this is what a top hat looks like and it's by far Christian's favorite tool to use to fine tune his bow What's cool about this is, it sleeves right into your limb and your axle goes through this, making it a very robust system and more durable to wear. Also, you won't lose it as easily as your normal traditional um, spaces that come with the other bows. These top hats are Mathis' answer to fine tuning your bow to level insanity. And I'm going to show you how. I also do recommend to put at least five shots through the paper so that you can ensure the validity of your tear um, and do not only use the same arrow for all five shots, use uh, the best spinning ones too because that will make the whole tuning process worthwhile. Um, let's get started. First up, get a shot through the paper so that you can see how your arrows leave the bow. Before you change your top hat, also make sure that your bow is at center shot. The center shot is uh, 13 sixteenths of an inch, which is 0 0.8128 inches. I'll put that on the screen. And for the guys who are working in metric, it is 20.64 millimeters. Um, to get this measurement, I suggest using a caliper, or if you don't have calipers, you can use a steel ruler for the best results. Um, you measure the inside of the shelf where your burger hole sits uh, to the middle of your wrist. Make the necessary adjustments to line up your wrist with the middle of your bow and voila, that is center shot. So from the paper tuning results, it is clear that we have a slight tail right on all five of the arrows. So all the tears are consistent and now we can get to make some changes. The rule of thumb is to start with your top cam and you also want to move your cam towards your tail's direction. So if you have a tail right, like in this case, we need to move your top cam to the right. So we're gonna assess what spaces are left. Um, the chances are good that we will only have to swap these and check if that works. So what top hats do we need to use in order to counter this um, error over here? It's a great question and uh, I actually do not have a concrete answer. I just know in which direction we need to move it. What you need to remember is this is a trial and error process and start with your top cam uh, only. Um, then also, you'll see that on the top hats, each top hat has a line uh, either close to uh, the shoulder in the middle or uh, at the bottom. This is because they work in pairs and they should never be mixed up. You can use them for the same limb, but do not use uh, a middle line top hat with one that has a line on the bottom as well, because uh, both of them needs to fill in a gap that is exactly calculated by the engineers at Matthews, uh, so that everything runs in a nice smooth line. So how do you actually remove the top hats? Let me quickly show you. I'm gonna pop the bow in the press, like that. Nice and centered. Get some slack on the strings. Also make sure the press has even pressure across the two limbs, otherwise you won't get the axle out. Loosen the axle's bolts on one side, take a larger allen key and then press the axle out slowly. At this point you can wiggle the cam out. Stick the allen key inside the limb to push one of the top hats out. Do the same with the other one and put the new top hats in. In this instance, I'm only going to change the current one um, around and then you can align your cam and push through your axle again. So now comes the tricky part. Do not fasten these axle bolts too much. If you do, you'll hurt the bearings. To make sure that you do not have too much pressure on the side of the bearings, you can feel if the cam is running smooth by rotating it back and forth while it is in the press. If you feel a weird jumpy feedback while rotating the cam, you have too much pressure on the cam and you need to back out the axle bolt a bit. All right, I'm gonna check if all the strings and cables are hooked properly. There you go. And release it. And then shoot a couple of shots through the press again. See what the changes made on the other side.
All right, so you want to repeat this process up until you end up with a nice bullet hole like these two, three of them. That's really crisp. If you run out of spaces on your top cam, you can start moving your bottom cam. So what happens if you max out both of the caps? Well, I'm gonna give you a troubleshooting guide on what you follow and what you look for on different places. And the first one is move the cams to the right direction. I'm gonna repeat it again. If you have a tail right, you need to move your cams to the right. If you have a tail left here, then you need to move your cams to the left. Starting with your top cam, if you run out of tolerance on the spaces or the top hats, uh, then you can start moving your bottom cap. Number two, make sure that your arrow spine is correct for your draw length and your poundage. My draw length is a 29 inch. I have the 75 pound modules on and this is a 300 spine with a 100 grain tip out front. This works perfectly for me. As you can see, we didn't have any trouble tuning this bow. The rest is at center shot and we only had to swap the spaces on the top cam. And yeah, that was it. So number three is Ensure that you do not have excessive face contact with your string as it influences how the string travels after you have set off your release. Also, make sure that you hold your bow dead still and have a smooth release. For example, do not punch. I mean, come on, it's 2021. Just stop punching. It's as easy as that. Um, <laughs> then, after that, also check your modules, especially if they are properly fastened down. I've had some problems. Use a bit of Loctite, not too much and also check your string stopper position and if it's tied down properly. That can also affect how the arrow le leaves your bow. If none of these work, then there's a high chance that your draw length might be too short or you dock your bow uh, excessively. The shorter draw length will actually put some unwanted torque on your grip and also cause you to draw too hard into the wall, which um, adds unnecessary tension inside the system at full draw, which definitely also has an effect on how the arrow leaves the bow. It's not consistent, so you're gonna get different results all the time. Tag a friend in the comments whose arrows are flying like pork chops. This might help them. And then please like and subscribe if you found this helpful to catch my next video and I'll see you next time. Cheers now.